Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join real estate entrepreneur and mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business, or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Guys, welcome back to Construct Your Life. Ryan decided to show up today. We're super excited uh, since he, what he's doing, guys, is he blew me off of his podcast so I can record this one, and then he's going to forget about me because he's not trying even. to big time me. <laughs> uh, not I, even. I'm just messing. Guys, this is this is an honor. I just looked. I just looked at the podcast episode because I wanted to know. Dude, 25. Your podcast episode 25. Yep. I think I think we're up to like... I don't even know how many, like 170 right now. So uh, it's good to have the man, the myth, the legend back on. Guys, if you want to hear Ryan's story, uh, jump back to episode 25 because we're just going to jump in here. Um, kind of give them a brief overview of who you are to the new listeners and what you do, and then we'll kind of go from there. Absolutely. So I wear a lot of hats in real estate. I own multiple companies. I have a traditional real estate team that helps families buy and sell throughout the valley, Um, We do literally everything from residential to commercial to rentals, investment properties, so on and so forth. I also have an investment company that specializes in wholesaling real estate and flipping houses. And we've got a couple of rentals. And then the last business that we actually just opened, I don't believe, yeah, we definitely did not have it when you and I last talked. It is our staging company. So with our flips, we actually stage the houses. We put a bunch of furniture out there and we kind of make it feel as if it's a home rather than being an empty house. So that is the brief overview of my lifestyle. But like I said, I wear a lot of hats. I love it. And I think we interviewed almost to a year ago to date. So I want to give them some context. Um, How many deals a month were you doing back a year ago? About a year ago, we were at like five to 10. If we got close to 10, it was a really good month. And how many are you doing now? Last month, we did 32. Okay. So big difference. Yes. Um, what would you equate that to? What would you what would um, you put your hat on? Honestly, it's been the people. Um, I've been fortunate enough to hire the right people in the right places. And then with that said, I didn't realize, but a year ago, if you were to ask me how my systems and processes were, I would tell you I'm a rock star. I could tell you a year later, my systems and processes are so far revamped that I'm able to be disconnected from most of my companies. And now I'm just looking at it from a 10,000 foot view down, giving my input, advice, coaching, mentorship to my team, rather than actually having to be in the, the, the grind of doing this on a day-to-day basis, trying to find the next deal. One of the joys of this, and I guess it's a byproduct of creating it, because you're, you're probably the third or fourth person I've interviewed the second time. Um, it's like I'm talking to a different human and not oh, in man. like a bad way, but like in a great way, because I've had the luxury of, you know, watching you grow up and, and how old are you again? I am 23. Okay. So I've had the luxury of watching you grow up, see from afar. I know your team, um, you know, we've had lunch with them, so on and so on. And it's one of the, I was thinking about this interview and I was thinking to myself, like, where's the most value? Where can we give the most value? And I'm thinking to myself, like, one of the things that I love about you is that age doesn't really matter. Um, and, and I think that a lot of people sit on the sidelines and they wait till the right moment. They right. wait for the right age. They wait for the right experience. And, and yes, all those things do matter. Life experiences do matter. But, you know, what is your advice to any young kid out there that's maybe like get in college or in high school? And I mean, right. let's be honest, you have people that work for you that were last year were still in high school. So right. what, what, you know, what would you be your advice to them? Um, so for me and forgive me if I said this on the last one, but I actually had this opinion when I was younger that anybody, regardless of their age, as long as they were older than me, knew more. So Mm -hmm. I looked up to teachers. I looked up to counselors. I looked up to advisors. I looked up to uh, family members. I looked up to people that I thought had successful businesses and successful lives. And it wasn't until I started to get into this industry of talking to people as much as I do on a day-to-day basis that I realized that people don't have anything figured out. It's just this rat race of 
go and get this stable job, have a 401k, work the nine to five, and the American dream will be by the time you go to retire, you'll bank on your 401k. Hopefully you're not in too much of debt from college and you haven't bought anything stupid. You are not underwater on your house, so on and so forth, all these variables. Um, I would say that being young, it's really figuring out what you want. For me, I mean, you couldn't have came to me at 16 years old and been like, you're going to be this real estate mogul. I'd have been like, okay, chill out. I've been like, no, I'm going to be this sports journalist guy. You're going to see me on Fox. Like I'm going to be covering the bears games. I'm going to be going out and traveling the world, this and that, whatever. Um, as I got into this real world in this business realm, I was able to kind of separate myself and what I had thought the real world was to what it actually is. So as I started to, again, go through this as a day-to-day basis, I realized people's lives were not all rainbows and butterflies. A lot of couples and their relationships are not healthy. Uh, finance, dude, geez, like people and their finances, like it is not a pretty sight. And I don't mean all this to be coming across negative. It's just these are real world examples and experiences that I go through on a day-to-day basis. So to be able to separate yourself at a young age and understand that this is your life, figure out what kind of go, let's go with the theme of your podcast, construct your life figure out what it is that you want and then revolve around by surrounding yourself with people that are doing what it is you want. And then more importantly, try as many things as possible, fail forward and figure out, you know what? I tried this. I don't want to do this. I tried this. I don't want to do that. Um, I tried this. I kind of like it. Maybe it's a passion. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I'll put that on the back burner. Like you got to try so many different things and then just figure out what you like by the one that makes you the happiest. So so money. I came up with something today on my other podcast when we were interviewing. I said, and I equated it to real estate. I said, too many people are living their life on gross margins when they should be living their life on net margins. Absolutely. Yep. It's the truth, man. Because ultimately at the end of the day, you know, you've had great success at a young age, but you still have to <laughs> do this for the next 40 or 50 years, right? Absolutely. And so it becomes bigger than the number. It becomes bigger than the net worth. And I think you hit on something there earlier is that I truly believe that the currency in this world is people. Oh, I for think, sure. I, I think I look at my, you know, like the companies we're building and, and people don't even know what I'm doing because I'm just keeping quiet and I don't need to say anything. But the, the, all these things are only possible because of rock star people and they're very good at what they do. But on the back of that, they let me do what I'm good. And of and, course. And I'll be honest with you, part of what I do can't be explained. <laughs> it can't even be quantified. But 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 they know they see it and they value it and they push it. And that's why I look at people like Albert and Amber on your team. And, you know, I told you after I met them, I was like, done. I was like, done, because the vision is ultimately yours. But the vision as a team is everybody's. And I think that's the big difference. Quote that. That was beautiful. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. I just came up with that. That was pretty good. Yeah, (laughs) dude. No, um, you hit it right on the head. And those two specific people, um, I mean, I've got to give shout outs to. So Amber, um, ironically, actually, today, we just moved her into a position where she's going to be salary based plus commission and bonuses. She's a 19 year old that was in high school last year, and she's on track to potentially clear $100,000 at 19 years old by doing this. So amazing. Okay, true story. Yes. I am going to introduce her to one of the greatest women I've ever met yesterday. We had a 30 minute call. It lasted for two hours. Yes. She has flipped over 1,500 homes. She owned one of the largest funds ever in California. She got kicked out and was homeless and became working for a land developer at 16. Wow. She was running the company at 19. And and so I was like, oh, like how many women? And she she coaches women. And I'm like, right. how many women could you? She's writing a book right now. And I'm like, this is amazing. And I and I, now that I'm you're saying that with Amber. Oh, yeah. and, and, and what did I tell you? And I hope she's listening. I want you to listen to this podcast. I left that time at your house when I met her, and I was like, done. I was yes. like, done. Like yep. I was like, she's more professional and more focused than most 30 year olds I meet done <laughs> right and I gotta tell you like she's the hardest worker on the team she's always the first in last out and she's been with me for a year so I got her on the team when she was 18 she came to me to shadow me for a day and she saw my operation saw my vision and what I was like preaching of what my my goals were and she's like I I see it she went and got licensed two weeks later she came back to me she's like I have my real estate license what I do I'm like Wow. The amount of times I tell people to go get their license and they're like, either they struggle, they don't take the action. Or, I mean, they just never hit me up again. I mean, those are three more common 
outcomes rather than somebody come back to me within two weeks at 18. I mean, I took eight times to get my test like passed and everything. So for her to come in and just fly through it, I was like, she's committed. She's smart. She's ambitious, like absolutely a stud. So she's a rock star. And then obviously Albert as well. Um, he is the COO of my investment company. He handles all my operations, all of the systems and processes. And he's the easiest way to put it is that he's my integrator. So mm -hmm. it's been phenomenal. It's, it's interesting because it took me losing a lot of money and it took me lying to myself to understand that like you can't, uh, you can't be the CEO, you can't be the boss, you can't be any of those things if there's resistance to task. Right. And what I mean by that is not like you should shy away from work. That's not what I'm saying. But if it, if it can't happen for you that quickly, then you need to outsource it. You need of to course. figure it out. And so like the same, the same task that it would take somebody on my team, you know, to do in an hour would take me two weeks. Cause I just don't want to do it. Of right. Course. Of course. So as you sit here today and as you grow and you keep building and you keep adding companies, what would you say that is Ryan Zolan's strength? Um, oof, man, that's a, that's a really good question. I think my ability to lead has been something that's been a running theme my entire life. I noticed it in high school specifically that I had this big group of friends and it was like, I was the only guy that was capable of making plans. I was the only guy that was capable of getting everybody together. And it was a group. We became family. We were all super close. Um, and then I was in this business marketing club, same one that Albert and Amber were in in high school. And I became the vice president my senior year. So I was, uh, as the vice president, my role and responsibility was to handle all of the events. I was the one that was in charge of all of the students in the chapter. I was the one that was basically just given the most responsibility out of all the officers. The president was the one that kind of, I would tell you as a CEO now, they were just the, the face and the name where the VP was the one that kind of did everything behind the scenes. So for me, my strength was leading and putting people in the right positions and making sure that we were all kind of able to have this camaraderie and come together as a team. And so that kind of reflected pretty quickly into real estate. It was like, I had a great first year. I mean, great first year, I sold like 10 homes. And I was like, man, I made like $70,000. I don't have a college degree. Like, are you kidding me? Like, this is, this is life. This is great. But then I started to think bigger. I'm like, how do I make a million dollar business on my own? And it was like within two seconds, it, I, I honestly, I didn't even overthink this. I'm like, I can't do this. I need more people around me. Mm -hmm. So it was just leading by example, being a good, genuine human being. I'm not in this for the money. I'm in this to actually see people grow and develop and become the best version of themselves. So for me, I was able to separate myself from my company and emotions and business. And I was able to put all my effort and energy into the people that work for me. And so with that, they've all been able to grow and blossom into these amazing, genuine, wholehearted, down to earth, ambitious people that I look up to love spending all my days with and respect highly. So um, I would say my superpower, honestly, has been the ability to lead and then connect pieces in the right, connect people into the right places in the team. And, and I would say that that's probably my specialty too. And so we're very similar in that realm because ultimately what it takes to be that version of yourself or be that CEO or whatever that is, a business partner, is you ultimately have to look at somebody and you have to say, you know, this is where I think that you should operate in and, Absolutely. and let me support you, right? Yep. And so one of the things I've been working on a lot and we're, we're in talks with some different people is coaching real estate teams, Absolutely. you know, and being the outside force the kind of not the boss, like just kind of seeing people and like, maybe you should try this. And like, one of the things I'm really railing against lately is like in an age of digital marketing, which I think is super important. I mean, obviously I have a podcast and I'm on right. social media, but I was talking to somebody the other day that I highly respect. And I, I think that ultimately this hand to hand relationship is actually where you do the business. Yep. And I think that we, especially in a technology age are teaching the young kids that it's okay to, you know, straight up DM somebody and, 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 and like, don't even add any value. I'm just here, take my shit. Right. And where I think the people are going to continue to win is in the hand, what I call hand to hand marketing, which is shaking hands, mm -hmm. having coffee, right. Really getting to know somebody and not so much selling yourself first. Is that the same yep. reason why y'all grown so much? Oh, absolutely. Without a doubt. Um, I would say it's the personal relationships, that personal touch rather than, cause even so like while I'm young and I'm grew up with technology, like becoming as big as it is. I mean, I can only imagine like the four or five, six year olds now that have the big iPads walking around. Like I didn't have that luxury, but I wasn't the one that was like, Whoa, 
internet. Let's freak out. Let's take it slow. This is a little suspicious. Like I just jumped right into it. I grew up, I had like a laptop at a young age and everything. And um, for me though, I grew up around my family having their own business. And so I saw the personal relationship touch that was actually able to separate them from most of these other companies. Most other companies have either bad customer, like care satisfaction, they don't have good quality product, or more importantly, they're just not in it for the right reasons and it reflects with their business morals and their quality of work. So for me to be able to separate myself being young and understanding that I needed to have that personal touch with these people to separate myself, I think that's what's even like allowed you and my, like our friendship to grow into what it's been today. I know I could call you, you'll probably voicemail, but you'll call me back. And it's like, we'll sit on the phone for 30 minutes, just catching up being like, Hey, how are you? We don't see each other and everything, but it's, it's that personal relationship of knowing like you're in town. I'm gonna be upset if you don't call me to go grab lunch or go grab a drink or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Like, let's go grab dinner. Like even uh, with uh, Devin Burr, Ricky, Ryan, Reed, all those guys, like you're out, out here in town, we go grab dinner. You're out here last time and you're like, hey, let's go grab lunch. Took the team out to go meet you. Like that's the personal touch for me that I care more about relationships than I do about the money and the growth of the business. I know that at the end of the day, it'll come back to its full circle and it will pay for itself 10 times over as long as I'm doing this for the right reasons. So so we were just in Colorado for like six days and yep. and we saw coaching clients and investors and a buddy and he took us out paddleboarding. Yep. And Cassie looks at me and she's like, who the fuck do you don't know? Like, she's like, not only who do you not know? She's like, you, they're like inviting you to their house and they're staying in like, I drove two and a half hours just to go meet this guy that we've talked for like two years. He's ex recovery guy owns a couple businesses and we went paddle boarding. It was great to see Crest of Butte and stuff. And she was just like, okay. Like I get it. Like, because like, there's so much more there. Right. Of course. But more, but more importantly, and I think this is super important is that it's a long game, right? It's a long game. You're telling me, man, that was the first thing I told myself when I got in at real estate. I was like, if this is my 50 year plan, I'm in this for the long term. I'm not mm -hmm. in this to, cause at the end of the day, one, I'm not here to screw people Two, I got to sleep at night, man. Like mm -hmm. I can't, I can't sleep knowing that I'm not doing the right things. And at the end of the day, if this is a long-term gain, I need to make sure that I'm doing things the right way. And I'm going to, and I know you feel the same way, but I'm going to give everybody that's listening the biggest tip in the entire world. Okay. And I'll equate it to two things to put it in confidence to you. There might be people that I want to meet. There might be people that I want to have on the podcast. Yep. That doesn't mean I ask right away. Of course. There's a billionaire I had on the podcast, multi-time billionaire. And I was like, I could probably ask him. I could go through a friend and get him on. But I said, you know what? I'm going to record 100 episodes first, and then I'm going to ask him. And he was, like, he was like, thank you. He's like, thank you for like, he didn't care, but it mattered to me because I wanted, I wanted validation. And so, you know, as you're meeting people and you're being intentional with your networking and relationships, understand that you don't need to go in for the ask right away. Sometimes you're setting it up for a year. Sometimes you're setting it up for two years. Sometimes you're setting it up for three years. Jab, uh, jab, jab, right hook. Gary yeah, I mean, this guy named Amer Aaron Amusastegi out in Austin, they just built a hundred home uh, rental portfolio and Beautiful. they built an entire neighborhood. Right. And he said, what y'all don't understand is when I got out of college, I worked for these guys 20 years ago. And who would have known that 20 years later we were building out this community. And so it really is, you can't, now you can't let anybody you know, fuck with you, but you don't need to be rude because you, you don't need to burn any bridges because you have no idea. You don't what. know who anybody is and who they know and how they know. Yep. I tell everybody, be careful who you're nice to when you're young because he could be the next Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, people have a glow up, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, but what's interesting, right, is relationships, team, everything, but like down to a tactical sense, do you think, uh, besides dialing in your systems and everything, jumping up to the amount of deals that you're doing per month was also just you like personally leveling up more or like putting in the work to get up more? Or is it more of like just the market? Because that's the question I want to, it's yeah. like a two-part question. Right. Because I'm really frustrated because I see real estate agents pumping their chest out yep. and I'm like, you didn't do anything. So like, my question is, is like, how much does the market play 
in to how successful the company is and does the company need to be ready when the market's good? It's kind of the it's a double problem. I love that. So to answer the first part of um, market goes down, I'm going to buy everything. I've got the capital built up and we are building it as a team to when the market does go down, we're going to buy it. We're going to buy rentals as a team because when the market typically goes down, historically rent goes up. So mm -hmm. my team's going to have plenty of opportunities for rentals and JB opportunities within the team and organization. Um, as for what differentiated us this month specifically, as opposed to other months and what's allowed my growth to be as big as it's been in the past even year, honestly, dude, I go back to like the systems and people and stuff, but there was nothing really crazy that I did differently. I a hundred percent agree with you about in this market, you don't need to be all that special to be a quote unquote good agent. You've got a property that is valuable, desirable in some way, shape or form. You might mess around and have five offers day one without even doing any of the right pictures. Mm -hmm. Um, we've had an open house that had 75 plus people show up. Like it, it's not anything <laughs> like you're not reinventing the wheel. You're just putting a property up in a seller's market where the supply is low and the demand is extremely high. With that said though, my team out of the 32 deals, there was only like three of them that were traditional. So two of them mm -hmm. were listings. One of them was a buy in this market. Being a buyer's agent is an absolute nightmare. And I wouldn't wish that upon my, my worst <laughs> enemy. Uh, but again, with all that said, that means the majority of our deals were JV partnerships with a referral of a deal for an investment. So whether it was a wholesale or flip or whatever, or it was direct to seller, it was MLS. MLS is my specialty. That's kind of like, I guess, another one of my superpowers. So walk us through all those things so we can yep. really add value. Cause, that, cause that's, yep. say, say that first part again, you did 32 deals and how many were, were traditional. So there was three, two of them were listings and one of them was a buy. So, I mean, that gives us 29 deals that were all investment. Out of the 29, I don't know the exact numbers I don't have up in front of me, but let's just say it was 19, well, probably 19 of them were MLS. Four were probably direct to seller, or maybe it was probably even but, two, to, two but, or three. Or but three. Ryan, there's no deals on the MLS. Bro, MLS is my like specialty. And I guess that's <laughs> one of my superpowers I should have mentioned earlier. Dude, I think but, you should write a book called, it's called, the MLS is my bitch. <laughs> we, uh, bad, master, bad wording, guys. No, MLS bro. Master of the MLS. I've already yeah. got it through. But, go. but uh, yeah, no. So MLS-wise, we specialize where I can get these properties under contract and I'm either going to flip it because I have the commission, which gives me a good enough margin to make a deal that for most people wouldn't be a deal, an actual deal for us. Or two, my favorite is like, I'll take down a deal and I'll get the commission and I'll wholesale it. So for example, like a $500,000 deal commission on a 3% is $15,000 as a traditional agent. Most people are thinking, damn, I would kill. I would give away my liver. If I had a $500,000 client every single month, I became the $500,000 client every single month. So if I'm getting a $15,000 commission, that's just for representing myself. I have my Zolin group team represent 34 holdings. My investment company as the buyer, we get a $15,000 commission. Let's say we assign it out from 500 to 530. I get 3%, which is 15 G's off of 500,000. And then I get that $30,000 assignment fee, meaning I did absolutely nothing other than paperwork. And I made $45,000 on one deal. Now you do this five times in a month. You're having a very good time. So, okay, let's, let's unpack that. Yep. Cause I, I want to make sure people understand that. So are you saying that they're underpricing their house on the market? To what they could probably get we are really good at negotiating i'm really good at building rapport and more importantly i'm really good at just giving people the terms that they need at the end of the day what i always teach is on the traditional side like i just said a second ago the hardest part is finding a client and right now when you're representing buyers and you are finding clients is that really what you want to spend your time doing showing 50 homes over the span of two weeks writing offers over and over and over again getting beat out multiple times personally it's not worth my time second is the hardest part on the investment side is finding a deal so with that said, I think that like the MLS specifically for me was just like, I know at one point somebody raised their hand and said, hello, I would like to sell my house. And not only are they that serious, they employed another agent to represent them to sell their house. So now on the investment side where you're trying to find the deal, you're just unpacking it exactly like you and I are doing right now. Let's figure out what the seller situation is. Sometimes it's not a five day close of escrow with a two day inspection period. In this market, sometimes they need to sell their house in order to go into another one. So they're looking for maybe a 30 day close of escrow with a 15 day lease back for them to have 50, or a post possession for them to have 15 days in the property to go find a different place. It's about really digging in and finding out what the seller's motivation is and what their situation is, and then reverse engineering it to figure out what the best offer and terms are for them. So let me, so let me, just so I understand, you've got 500,000 
liquid cash in your pocket and you're just like here I, no okay guys I'm, I'm making a joke so long story short guys if you don't understand that just because i want to say it one more time so he is selling the house to himself guys so and then what's the number one asset that you need in any market the deal okay so not only is he making commission on the front end he's making uh money on the back end but he's also not coming out of any money out of pocket because he's not technically buying the house He's a sign unit. Exactly. So let's let let me say it one more time. So everybody hears. I'm gonna say it real, real slow. So he made forty five thousand dollars doing paperwork. Mm-hmm. So they lied to you in school, guys. You can be rich make doing paperwork. We call it flipping paper. <laughs> But yes, we love the wholesaling method. And then with that, obviously, I built up enough capital to where we're able to take down flips. Right now, we've got five going and it's just so, a matter of... So in essence, I'm asking, because yes. I know I know Tim does this. So if you commission it to yourself and yep. then you wholesale it to your flipping company and your flipping company flips it and you represent, could you make money four times? You can get the commission to buy it. You can wholesale it to yourself. You can actually, if you want to take Devin Burr's method, you could be your own bank and you could be doing it through like a life insurance policy. So you can do three, you can get the commission on the back end and you get the profit when you sell it. You can make money five different ways if you really wanted to. Five times, guys. Five times. Be creative. Absolutely. You're so, you're so excited to do the deal. Mm-hmm. You're so excited to get things done that you don't sit back and look at all your options. And-, and Dude, I mean, that's the thing for me too, is as I saw, the reason I transitioned away from the traditional side as my focus was because I took a step back. And one, I asked myself, like I said a little bit ago was, can I make a million dollars doing this? I can, but it's giving me a lot of transactions, a lot of sales, a lot of time. I'm probably doing 60 hour weeks. I'm giving up my weekends and my nights because that's when people like to see houses. Mm-hmm. That's not why I got in real estate. Um, but more importantly was how can I fully capitalize on these deals? I don't want to leave anything on the table to where, I mean, of course I want other people to win. If I can wholesale it out, like I do a bunch of deals with Templeton, like we did like 11 last month. If I send it to him and I make my 10K and he makes five, 10, 15, 20, who cares? I'm good. As long as I make what I want, I'm okay on the deal. So if I'm able to fully capitalize and make sure that I'm maximizing my profit on every single transaction, our average profit per deal is anywhere from 20 to 25,000. And that's just assignment. That's not counting commission. Our average commission is about $13,000. So, I mean, you can do the math. If most of my deals are MLS, if I'm doing $20,000 assignment plus $13,000 commission, that's $33,000 for one deal. If I'm doing that 10 times over in a month, we're making $330,000. So one of the things that we're doing with the construction and development company is we, my business partners already own a property management company. We're starting a new one. Mm -hmm. So we're also going to start buying uh, AC and plumbing and electric companies. Beautiful. Because we're going to do a build to rent turnkey model and then sell it to investors. And so we're going to catch money about seven times. And then we're going to collect monthly checks from property management. (laughs) Mm. I love it. I love it. And then we're going to package up that bad boy and sell the whole thing off. Yep. You get it. You got to sell a thing to a hedge fund or some big like private liquid capital company that's going to say, hey, I'll give you $50 million for this. I love the the well-oiled machine that you've created with this. I want it. They're going to buy, so they're going to buy it at a 10 X multiplier. Of course. So, so in essence, if we create a hundred million dollar machine, which is only building a thousand homes, two years in a row, they'll buy it for a billion. Right. I'm going to snag a photo of us really fast before I forget. So guys, look, high leverage income is great and it can get you where you're going, but understanding that things feed other things. Right. And I think if you look at, if you look at the people that we were that we that mentored us and show us what we're doing, that's one of the things I picked up from them. Is like, yeah, that sixty grand that you're making on the wholesale might be cute, but it still goes away, right? Of course, Bill's and so benefit. so where's all the other where's all the other avenues that you can make money? And 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 one of the things that we look at, like I talked to a guy the other day. I love this so much. This fucking dude is my my jam. He he manages six hundred and fifty doors in Texas. And he's got three people in the States. That's it. His company's run by five VAs. Of course. And he's like, they handle everything. And he's like, it's insane. And he's like, I'm about to hit the road. (laughs) And he's like, no offense to all the other people, but these guys show up. We just hired our our first two VAs for the hotel company. And they started today, uh, you know, for, for Tahoe. And um, it, it really is about leverage, creating leverage and understanding the mechanism. So 
So somebody asked me the other day, they said, what do you want to learn about? Like if we had an event, what would you go to? And I said, nothing. <laughs> and I was like, the reason is, is because the things that I want to learn, like I'm not trying to talk down on people, but things I want to learn are, are centered around not so much business, but it's, it's centered around like leverage and development. It's, you know what it's centered around? All the things they don't teach you. None of the things they don't teach you. That's my exact problem with most coaching courses, programs, meetups, is that there's always a sales pitch. It's always the, I'm going to teach you enough of how you can learn this, but not how you can do it on your own and take away from me. And that's my problem I have with most of these like yeah. big, big organizations. And that's actually why I'm implementing that myself, where we started doing a bunch of meetups at our new office. Um, mm-hmm. I started doubling down on my coaching. My I'm not I'm not doing a course yet. I don't want to be that sellout yet. No, I yeah, make sure, no, no, you're but, fine. But yeah, I, I just want to provide real value. I want someone to be able to take from this and be like, I couldn't have put a price tag on this. Dude, I so my Airbnb thing that I'm doing right now, yep. I was like, what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna give them everything. And of like course. and I, there's that's there's tears <laughs> on that paperwork. There's there's lost money, yep. but it's like, what did, like, dude, go be successful and tear it up. Like, you know, somebody was telling take me the other day, somebody was telling me the other day they're like, they're like, Yeah, the coaches teach you just enough to charge you again. <laughs> Of course, because at the end of the day, they want the repeat business or more importantly, like I said, they want you to be able, well, think about it. It's a lead source for them. So while you're paying them for their time at the same freaking like time that they're taking your money to talk to you, they're going to teach you how to do the business. But more importantly, they're going to teach you how to bring it to them so that they could close the deal and take half of it. And I'm like, well, I mean, people are like, oh, it's 50%. And all it does is ruin team structures when people are looking at it, thinking the grass is greener, like, well, why are they getting 50% and I'm only getting X percentage? And you're like, do you realize that the overhead that comes with while they are paying for the coaching, it's not free to get a deal. You're gonna have to pay on average, it's like $2,000. Like our cost per deal is a little bit cheaper with most of it being MLS. But if you're direct to seller, your average overhead is 2,500 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. So if you're then spending 500 bucks, let's call it 500 bucks for a coaching session, 2,500 bucks, you're three G's in deep. What if you can only wholesale it and make 5K? You have to split that with that person, 2,500, 2,500. You're not even in the green. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. granted, it could be it's a direct to seller. You're probably making a little bit more. But if you call it 10K, you're splitting five and five. Or even if you get 10K, does it make sense to spend three grand to make 10? For some yeah. people, it might. But I, at the same time, I don't want to take the risk if I don't have the ability to put up $3,000 without knowing that it's a guarantee. And Dude, dude I have to tell you two stories. And I'm glad. Right. I love that we're talking right now because this is for guys. Full disclosure, everybody knows I'm not a wholesale coach. So I'm just, that disclaimer's in, in, in this conversation. So coaching client meets me February 6th. He says, I am about to lose it uh, with my multifamily brokerage job. I can't stand my office. I don't want to be anywhere near these people. I'm thinking about wholesaling. So I'm like, okay, what's the goal? So I'm like, okay, 40 grand is the goal by like March 1st. And he's like, okay, I'm going to like keep it as low as possible overhead and everything. So first two deals, 65,000. Um, we set a new goal for June, uh, July 2nd, 100, 110K. I love it. He knocks 127K <laughs> by June, but July 1st. What, what market? His, his uh, Ohio. His bills are three Beautiful. grand a month. Yep. His overhead on his company for that total four months. 1100 bucks. <laughs> Good for him, man. That, like, see, and that to me is honestly, all I heard there was action. And yep. it's, it's the whole accountability structure of what you were holding him accountable. While you did say you're not a wholesale coach, you're a life coach. And at the end of the mm-hmm. day, most people, what holds them back from the honest, like honest to God truth with success is their action. So if you're saying, Hey, walk me through what your goals are, walk me through your action steps. But more importantly, I'm going to hold you accountable by getting a date when you're going to get these set. Mm-hmm. You want to have X amount of dollars by when, by when, okay, it's going to be March. It's going to be April, June, July, whatever it is. And you're holding him accountable. It, I was uh, over at Templeton's meetup today and he had a perfect analogy. So think about it when you're in school, you have all these deadlines of when you have your exams or your, your paper, your five page papers due. You're given six weeks. When are you doing it? It's the Sunday before it's due on that Monday morning. Yeah. But you, because you had a deadline, you got it done. It's the yeah. same thing in life. When's your deadline? When are you expecting and when are you going to hold yourself accountable to getting this done by? And if you can hold yourself accountable and actually mm. reverse engineer it to where it makes sense. I mean, dude, life actually isn't that hard. I say that most of this, and this goes not just with real estate specific, but to life. It is 70% mindset, 40% action. That's it. 
If you can control what's up here and just have the action steps to follow what you're thinking and thinking positively, I promise you the success is right around the corner. Hundred percent. The kid that just the kid that just hired me, he yep. was work. He was he's twenty four. He's Love making it. he's making three hundred k in the oil field for the last two years. Had a baby. Okay. Doesn't want to be on the oil field anymore. Yep. Just grabbed just yep. grabbed his first property. Okay. One hundred and sixty five k wholesale on some yep. on a land deal. <laughs> I'm like, he's like, he's like, well, it was not as much, not as I said, he says, not as enough as my salary. And I said, yeah, but what's freedom? That took you a month. I was going to say, and on top of that too, what people don't realize is the amount of money that you have the ability to make while having the lifestyle that you would like to live rather than having to work for somebody else's American dream. Mm -hmm. That's like, you can't put a price on that. Dude, entrepreneurship has nothing to do with the amount of money you can make. It is a hundred percent freedom, control, freedom of time. You, you said that perfectly. I love the first two words, controlled freedom. Mm -hmm. we, we were talking about this on the podcast. Work-life balance is bullshit. It doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Control of your schedule is what you're yes. asking. Yes, yes. It's discipline. That's all it is. Yeah, yeah. it's 100%. I have a new, I have a new, I have a new dream. I don't know when I'm going to hit it, but my goal is to work Monday through Wednesday. That's it. And I'm going to run six companies Monday through in, Wednesday. In, look, look, don't get me wrong. I'm going to have some texts or some calls or some of emails, course. but I'm talking about scheduled shit, like podcasts or coaching calls. Like I'm not going to do work. This. It's going to be Monday yeah. through Wednesday. And that's it. I love that. I, I think that at the end of the day too, you can structure that lifestyle. Like, and don't get me wrong. Those yeah. Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays might be 16 hours, but who cares? Of course. If you could put in the work on those days to allow you to have the ability to structure your life and schedule to the way that you want. That's what it's about. And I mean, it's like that book, the four hour work week. Like mm -hmm. it's a very real thing. You can, it's all about the productivity and the production you're putting in, in those four hours that you're working. So I have a buddy I played golf with the other day. He yep. worked a software developer from 23 to 27, bought properties. He's financially free. He's out. He quit his job. He's just doing real estate. He's traveling around. Beautiful. And he is really good at VAs and he runs a couple companies, wholesale, some other stuff, Airbnb. And what he does is he leverages those three VAs and he said, I go to bed, I wake up, everything's done. <laughs> so here's my new thing. He starts his day on a level 10. Everybody else starts their day on a level three. Well, yep. I was going to say they take a while to ramp up. And then what ends up happening, you see this more in the corporate world. We just had a team meeting about this, but after lunch, people are they're but checked out. Yeah, yeah, they're done. They're done. They're ready for mm -hmm. the next day. They're collecting the check. They're on to the next whatever task is. And more importantly, it's that busy time activity. They want to make it look like they're doing things even though they're not. If you're able to truly work and put in the effort into however many hours you're working, whether it's four or 16 in a day, I mean, you can you can truly you know, do whatever you, you want. You know what? You know what? I just had an epiphany of why people love working for you and other companies like you that the number one thing that we crave in America, especially millennials, is growth. Of course. And of there's course. no ceiling on any of your employees. So they're allowed to go and hunt. And on top of that, I give them different buckets to where they can capitalize and make income. Where most teams say, your job responsibility is this. Stay within the guidelines, follow the tasks. And if you don't hit these expectations of mine, you're gone. It doesn't matter if you're 1099 or W2. For me, I say, what are your goals? Because at the end of the day, some people only want to make 50,000 a year and they want to travel around three, four months, whatever. Some people want to make a million dollars a year. At the end of the day, it's about I tailor to whatever their goals are. And then I, again, reverse engineer whatever it is to help them figure out what their day-to-day -day should look like. So I- you're, you're basic. You're not a boss. You're the coach. I'm the coach. I, I even tell them that. I'm like, call me your partner when you're talking to people. Just understand that I don't have to, I shouldn't have to put this disclaimer anymore, but there was one guy that ruined it for the bunch. We're not actually 50-50 partners, but I don't want you to look at me like I'm a boss. I want you to look at yeah. me as I'm more of your, your role model, your coach, the leader, but I'm not the boss that's behind while you're pulling me forward. I'm the leader that's at the front of the track, leading the way for you guys by example. Mm, I love that. So where do you think, because I know you get a lot of guys that hit you up all the time, young kids on yep. TikTok and everywhere. Where do you think the young people are getting it wrong? Um, when, they're, when they're trying to add value, they're trying to get a mentor, or all that stuff. Honestly, um, it's entitlement. Entitlement and egos. Uh, people have this entitlement that they think that they're going to come into real estate, snap their fingers, click their heels together, and they're going to make $100,000 in a month. I am at the point where I can make $100,000 in a month at 23 years old. But what people seem to forget is that I did this, I've, I'm in year five. 
year five to be able to do this is still pretty damn good. And I pat myself on the back. I don't let it get to my ego, but I want people to understand too. I worked for free for my first six months. I mean, I was getting paid a base salary and commission, but I made $600. That was it for six months. I mean, I closed four deals and my split, I was almost just garbage. It was not like I, I did not make money. So I didn't have a problem with that because the value I took from it was what allowed me to create the systems and processes with my leads and my client database that I learned from that company. I was able to sacrifice my X amount of months and my minimal income without having an ego because I wanted to learn. Then I went and I found a business partner where I gave up half of my money on my deals, which was obviously better than what I was getting compensated prior. But by me giving up 50%, I gave him the incentive of saying, I don't want anything to do with your deals. I just want you to know if I bring you a deal, we'll split it 50-50. It was a no risk, no harm, no foul for him. And at the end of the day, I mean, what was the worst case scenario? I failed and he didn't pay any money or have any overhead with me. So I was willing to discount myself from the start. And I did that for my first three years. It wasn't until I felt confident going on my own that now I'm able to be like, okay, let's make sure that we're capitalizing on every single deal. But I was able to learn from the best of the best and take what I needed to, to in order to create all this. So I would say for most people where they go wrong at, at a young age is it's the egos, it's the entitlement, it's that they think that, that life is just some get rich quick scheme and they have their hand out and it just doesn't work that way. I hate to categorize people that are younger like that because I'm young myself, but I just, I don't have an ego. Nobody on my team has an ego and I make sure my interview process that I need to make sure they're more of a culture fit rather than a opportunity for them just to, anybody can do this job. And what I set up with our systems and processes, dude, like I could put a six-year-old, a seven-year-old, eight-year-old doing specific tasks that would generate income for me. Whereas I want to make sure it's more of a, like I said, a culture fit. No. And I'll jump on the back of that is that you don't want to fucking do the work. Like you don't want to do the work mm -hmm. guys. People look at my network and they're like, Oh damn, dude, it's like fucking a, I'm like, dude, this is 22 years in the making, bro. Mm -hmm. it's, not only that it's 22 years in the making with intentional value dump, dump trucks. So it's like at the end of the day, like understand that you have a long life. Your yep. first couple investments are nothing more than practice. Of course. And at the end of the day, you're going to learn bajillion more time. The perfect example, you haven't forayed into this world, which I'm sure you will soon. Do you know what they teach about development? Fucking nothing. Nothing. Yeah. It doesn't, ex it doesn't exist. Like there's no, there's no coaching. Courses, there's no manual. Mentorship. Like this no. shit is like you learn down. by doing and by being around the people that are doing it. And guess what? We're working on you know a townhome deal and a neighborhood deal, and we're in, in working on a town. You know all this shit. And I'm like, I've learned more in three months by being 100 percent awkward in rooms. Like you, because here's what yep. you do: you're on the call <laughs> and you like hear the word, and you're like, I don't know what that fucking word means, and you like write it down. And I'm like, when I get done, I'm like. I'm like Google it. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. I, I got it for the next one. You know, like the other day, perfect example. I'm on a phone call with the dude that his minimum lending is 200 million. Like he just did a $1.2 billion deal. And I'm leading, I'm leading the call and I'm like, what is going on right now? I'm like, I'm I mean, like, there's, there's also a sense of you fake it till you make it, but there's a certain point where you can't fake it. You either have it or you don't. And I could say specifically to you even was that, I could tell you like about our friendship, even like I knew from the minute I met you, there was something different about you, you, mm -hmm. your genuineness, your authenticity, and more importantly, your caringness for other people. Like mm -hmm. that's what separated you and set you aside where I could tell you, I've also had the experience of people that have come in that they think that like, oh, I could just fake it till I make it. And they burn out so quick, but that's because they have the wrong. Here's, here's the difference. Here's the difference in fake it till you make it and what you can actually do. You can't fake it of who you are. Of course you can't you can fake, fake it. You can fake it in business yes. and you can act like, you know, more than you want, yes. but ultimately your triggers and your emotions are going to come out of you. And of course you're real you. And especially the minute you start gaining any type of traction and success, you start to see because, people's true colors. And not only that. And then they're also freaking out because they're going to get found out. Of course. <laughs> like, here's, here's what, you know, and so like at the end of the day, like the reason that, that I'm fully confident that you are going to do everything you want to do is because you're very pragmatic in your, in your strategic steps. Right. But what I found interesting about you is like, I'm, I would imagine like, if I just had to guess, there's tons of stuff some days that you would rather be 
<laughs> you would rather be doing than being the boss and being the company. But what you're doing is you're setting yourself up for success for later on yep. when you decide to have a family, when you do all yep. those things. You hit that's, it right on the head. Yeah, yep. that's the difference. Yeah, I, I love what I do and I wouldn't change it. But even referencing Temp again, like at his meetup, he was uh, he made a comment. He's like, if I had a hundred million dollars in the bank, which I don't, but if I did, I would still be doing everything I'm doing today. Yep. And I, I literally said this in my meeting with my team today. I was like, guys, that's not true for me. Like, I want you to know if I had a hundred million dollars in the bank, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> and I told them, I'm like, I don't, don't get me wrong. Like you guys would all be taken care of. We'd all like be doing what we want, but like, I don't even know what that life looks like for me. All I know is like you had said, I'm doing this to set myself up for the future. So that when I do have wife and kids one day down the road, the flexibility and freedom to truly just be present with them. And that's what I want in my life. Aside from that, islands, traveling, all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, it excites me. But at the end of the day, like, I think I'd probably get bored of being on a beach. All I know is that like, if I had the ability to, you know, not come in and have to be this leader and this guy every single day, of course, like this is the authenticity of me and the human in me for me to be like, no, I mean, I would definitely be somewhere else. I would have a really mm -hmm. big, nice building and I'd probably have like our own gym in there. I would, I'd be a mixture of like, yeah, I'd just like to be around you guys and I'd like to be a resource, but as for day-to-day -day activities, no, probably not. Like I wouldn't be a part of that as much as I am right now. I, I'm going, it's already written in my head. It's written down. I'm going hard in the paint yep. for seven fucking years. I mean, like nobody's ever seen before for 45. Yep. And then we're going to cut loose. We're going to sell what we can sell. And then I'm going to sit back for six months, regroup. And then I'm probably going to run a fund and teach for free for the rest of my life. And see that that's what I see more of myself doing is the teaching consulting. It's almost like a lawyer. Like someone's like, Hey, I need this. And I want to provide as much value because I still give out a lot of information for free mm -hmm. and a lot of value, but everyone does have a price. I'd love it to be like, okay, you know what? Yeah. I need to make some money this month. Someone calls timer starts. I was, I was talking to somebody the other day who is one of the best salesmen I've ever met in my life. And, and we're, 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 talking about some stuff and 50 year old, I mean, just forgot more about sales than you and I have ever known. And I said, listen, you need to understand something. I said, your abilities of hospitality and salesmanship equate to every business. Of and I course. was like, and this is great. And he's already thinking it. So we're going to talk tomorrow. But what I'm saying is like, you can take what you're doing now and you can drape that over car salesman, yes. a company, insurance Absolutely. salesman. So you can make 20 times the money that you can make it what you're doing right now. And just because right. you've sold clothes your whole life doesn't mean that, that, that you don't have the raw abilities. And I think that's, what's exciting because I think you're like me is that real estate's cute and it's great and I love it, but it's just a vehicle. Dude, like, I was just going to say, you took the word right from my mouth. It's my vehicle that allows me to have all these different extravagant opportunities, the speaking, the coaching, the mentoring, the mm -hmm. having my team, having multiple businesses, the going to networking, like I can disconnect myself from my company and it's still a well-oiled machine. It is my vehicle that allows me to have my successes in multiple aspects of my life. Yeah. And ultimately uh, the color type and style of vehicle doesn't matter. Only the, driver, only the driver does. Beautiful. Love it. Yeah, I stole that from my co-host. So he said that today. But uh, but 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 so if people want to follow the journey, they want to find out more about you. How would they do that? Uh, yeah. So I actually, dude, I've like kind of dropped the ball on TikTok a little bit, like <laughs> straight up. Um, but my username on there is at Wholesale Houses. I will get back to posting one of these days. Um, as for best way to reach me, it is through Instagram. Just my first and last name, Ryan Zolin, R Y A N Z O L I N. Um, send me a DM. I may take a day or two to respond. I apologize, but that is the best way to get in contact. Wonderful. So I just decided in September, yes. we're going to have you, Albert, and Amber on the podcast. We're going to do uh, the whole team. I love it. Let's do it. Yeah, so we're going to do that. Guys, if you like this episode, make sure you send it out to your friends and we'll see you next time. I appreciate you having me on. Thanks, man. You got it, Mabut. Thank you for listening to Construct Your Life with Austin Lenny. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to start constructing your life by taking immediate action on what you learned. For show notes, resources, and more information on one-on-one -on -one coaching with Austin, visit constructyourlifepodcast.com.